we'll have a closing talk on this uh, topic of innovation, uh, collaboration and new technology for uh, 20 minutes now. So we thought that, uh, as I mentioned in the start of this day, we um, divided these uh, trend words in three topics uh, and you have visited parallel tracks, but it would be good also in a classic manner to, to wrap it all up with representatives for those three tracks. And uh, we have Joachim Duvemark from SVT, uh, uh, Updrag Janskning, <laughs> Mission uh, Investigate. Mission Investigate. Uh, also, uh, Hazel, excuse me, I have to look here. Hazel Sheffield from uh, Arena. Uh, and also Geronsberg from A Press. And uh, we were th um, just at having this. Uh, very classic arrangement of potentials and pitfalls because we have this interface between different trends. We've been talking a lot about digitalization, AI, collaboration, etc. So I just want to uh, direct first question now about the potentials, obviously. What do you want to send for the audience now uh, for main takeaway uh, based on the topic of today? Just a small round, and then obviously we'll go on the challenges as well. <laughs> Garans, would you like to start? Sure. So I think there's huge promise in investigating AI tools and their impacts in our communities. Um, and I think that it's a very exciting time to do this sort of high-impact work when in many of our countries our journalism actually is far more forward-thinking than some of the regulation around these tools. So collaboration is going to be key to get these stories done since they're very complex and need to be technically accurate as well as human-centered from what I've seen to have the best impact. But they're also perils. And so if you're going to be, you know, putting sensitive information into chat GPT to try to get it to summarize something for you and uh, lower your person hours um, in creating journalism, be careful because there are privacy concerns and accuracy concerns that you really need to stick to. And Hazel, what's your take on this? Thank you. Yeah, we talked uh, about collaboration in our track um, and how collaboration um, in a networked society is the way to kind of reflect society at large in our work. So we talked about collaboration as a tool for research, how you can access other journalists' networks by working together. We talked about it as a tool for security, kind of safety in numbers, um, when you're publishing data that, um, or information that could be libelous. And we also talked about collaboration for impact um, historically. But we're also thinking now about collaboration as a set of skills that we can, that has been studied, that we can teach and that we can now apply to other fields. So very excitingly, um, emerging collaborations between journalists and scientists, not just using scientists as sources, but journalists becoming so embedded in the research that they can actually write papers for academic journals, that they can be called to give papers or talks in front of governments. And we also talked about um, collaboration um, with audiences and various different tools that can facilitate that. Um, and collaboration um, as a way of communicating, a kind of soft skill, intercultural communication, which is as important to journalists as um, learning how to use AI uh, to search data or your interview techniques. Thank you. Joachim, what do you say? Um, well, I, I started um, our session with um, telling a background why I said yes to hold that session. It, it was on, on innovative methods. And I said, yes, I will talk about that if, if it's a non-AI presentation. Yeah. Uh, I am um, not a tech guy. Um, quite the other way around. But what I can bring is perspective in time and that goes to, to international collaboration. 
um, when we started 20 years ago trying to reach international cooperation with other media outlets abroad, it was very, very difficult. It was a totally different environment. People were, you know, um, competitive, suspicious. But thanks to organizations, you know, like uh, ICIJ and, and, and great stories coming out of collaboration, um, things have changed. Today we have, you know, lots and lots of different uh, uh, international networks among journalists that creates really good stuff. But it has taken a lot of time. And I think when it comes to innovative um, methods and technology, that's pretty much the same. Uh, now, a couple of years ago, um, it was a lot about coding. And, and coding is fine up until a certain point um, where it stops being super efficient and, and old classic journalism is the thing that makes a difference. And in some way, I see um, artificial intelligence in the same way. It, it has today some really good tools. Um, and for me, working with television, um, transcribing and translation is, 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 is one really good tool that is you know, ready to be used. But I have used, I have tried so many models in that field for the past, you know, 10 years, and they, you know, they suck, really. So, my point is, um, innovative methods is not only about artificial intelligence. Um, in these conferences, we, we tend to go to sessions where you get, you know, a good tip sheet, a really um, fancy tech solutions, but during my, you know, some soon 30 years, it's always when you combine a, a, a good tool with classic journalism, with uh, um, cultivating sources, that's when it becomes powerful. And, and a lot of young journalists, they sit at their desk. And I, and, and I fear that that is a... a, a uh, development which is not a very good one. Uh, you have to be out in the world, you have to meet, you have to create a big network in order to get human intelligence and combine that with good tech tools. So I'm, I'm, I'm the grumpy old man <laughs> here. Um, but we talked about different, uh, um, different methods of, of uh, um, using technology non-AI. So, yeah, thank you. So, uh, keeping the core of journalism, and I think that, uh, but still, you know, moving ahead, and I think these kinds of conferences shows the growing community of investigative journalism, obviously. We have all-time high participation not in the big conference, and here we have been about 600 journalists today. So, I think it's, uh, this is an awesome opportunity to share experiences and knowledges as well. So, so uh, just to, to uh, turn it around, what are the, the key challenges you can see uh, in the development today? If we start with you again. Sure. Um, so I'm based in San Francisco where AI companies are having a bit of a moment. There are billboards everywhere saying that, you know, they'll change our lives in so many different ways. And I think that to your point, you know, these models are not going to investigate themselves. They're, you know, AI is not going to meet people in a garage and get a, you know, leaked code base or call 30 people to really get to the bottom of how a model works. And I think it's really incumbent upon us to hold these companies to account and to also follow our policymakers as they implement tools that sometimes are untested or haven't been audited and you know the public is not the wiser so this is difficult work because it requires some level of comfort with data science but that does not mean you need to have a phd in order to get started so i think that part of our work as investigative journalists just like when we were all talking about coding a few years ago or you know computer uh 
NICAR conferences on computer reporting, computer-based reporting, is to get over that level of discomfort about what is new and to just delve in with the same kind of basic journalistic principles that apply whether you're covering, you know, agriculture, entertainment, or politics, which is how do these things work, how well do they perform, who's benefiting, who's making money, et cetera. So I, I see actually a huge challenge as being one that we can solve as a field, which is to just get over any concerns we have that we're not prepared to understand AI models and jump in with all the street smarts that we have. Hey, so what do you say? Um, yeah, coll collaboration or, or cross-border journalism is not an easy, an easy field. Like you hinted at a few years ago, the suggestion that we would all start collaborating and not competing against one another would be crazy. So we are, we are now in an era where collaboration is becoming more common, but it doesn't mean that it's necessarily any easier to um, surmount funding challenges to um, figure out how different jurisdictions handle privacy laws to uh, share data um, securely with somebody you've never met before. Um, even just to talk to people um, using a language that everybody can agree on. Um, so there are definitely still massive challenges to the developing field of collaboration. But what I would say is it's not in its infancy anymore. We have uh, masters in journalism focusing on collaborative uh, methods. We have mid-career training. We have um, PhDs even on the field. And at ARENA especially, we have uh, a series of different services that we can offer to journalists who are trying to collaborate, be that from a template for a memorandum of understanding or ongoing mentorship or secure digital platforms to share knowledge and communicate to uh, connecting you with other people through our networks, to helping you um, reach partners for publication to further your impact. Um, so I would just urge people who are struggling with any aspect of collaboration to find us and to, to talk about it because um, there, is, there is a body of literature now that can help us. Joachim, you were a bit critical of the AI hype, uh, <laughs> but positive uh, when it comes to collaborative uh, tendencies in the community. Yes. But what, do you, what are the key challenges that you can see from your perspective? Um, I think it's going to be business as usual for a while. Um, it, it in, in the long term, there will be, I mean, we, we made a joke and say, now we will predict the future in, in 20 minutes. And, and of course, that's not possible. Um, uh, I work a lot with the big leaks. Um, mass data where one of the methods is to um, pick samples and out of those samples you try uh, if the material is authentic and uh, Panama Papers for instance uh, 11.5 million documents and you you take samples and if they are correct then the likelihood of having the whole material being authentic is is bigger because faking 11.5 million documents is very, very expensive if it's going to be good and trustworthy. And I, I fear a bit that uh, um, over time, um, we will have to change our way of valuing evidence. Um, journalism today is about uh, documents, you know, preferably paper documents, signatures, photos, audio tape, videos, photos. That's, to, to me, that's evidence, you know. You have verbal sources, but you confirm it with hard evidence. And what happens when it becomes very cheap, uh, maybe to no cost at all, to produce 11.5 million documents. What happens when, and, 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 and that's in the very soon future when voices, you know, if, if someone today sends me an audio tape uh, with a, a, a famous politician, 
it's worth something. But if I'm being drowned with hundreds of tapes or you know files every day of known politicians doing whatever they do um, with documents you know that look authentic it's not that i you know obviously we will have tools in um, doing forensic work on a specific document that's not my point my point is that what happens is when we drown when, when a paper and a signature and a photo and when that's not evidence anymore, um, what will be the basis of, of us producing evidence? Uh, that's my fear. Um, it's not going to happen tomorrow maybe, but you know, maybe in a not so distant future. Um, and and uh, I don't have a solution. Um, I only see a tiny problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be a problem. I, I agree. Uh, yeah, the future will be interesting to follow. Um, so you three are all pioneering in your fields, and uh, I want to wrap this up by, you know, can you give us some, you know, advice for how to meet this uh, uh, the future we don't know very much about. But what would you say to the reporters uh, in the audience? Uh, how can we, what should we do? A very, you know, short advice. Sure. Well, I think one thing that is immediately useful is to try to become familiar with AI models and how they work. Um, because you never know when you're going to get a press release saying that you know, some new predictive tool is now going to change the world on your beat, and you'll have to get up to speed on how it works very quickly and be able to ask the kind of difficult questions that we as investigative journalists should be prepared to put forward. You also may be in a position where you need to help build an algorithm to parse through you know, the mass amounts of data that we're all inundated with. And you might have a chance to collaborate with academic researchers who have all of the data and don't have those journalistic questions in mind to come to a real you know, interesting uh, set of, of um, summaries that contain in the data if only ha they had the journalistic acumen and the sense of you know, public responsibility that you do. So my basic advice is to just study up on how these models work. We have the AP style book that now has a whole new AI chapter that I just led the writing on that has some ideas about how to think about training data, you know, what is generative AI, what uh, what is a chat bot, and just start to become familiar with how you might apply these tools in your work and also how you might cover them aggressively. Um, because more likely than not, one of those will happen relatively soon. Mm. Right. Yeah, shout out to the AP style book. Oh. It's <laughs> very nerdy. <laughs> um, yeah, my advice is to keep doing what you're doing and, and do amazing journalism and do not get uh, hung up on the software and tech problems in collaboration. There are already people who have solved that problem for you. If you need a secure digital environment, ask us, we can help you. If you need to find um, a reporter or somebody to help you with a very niche uh, collaborative issue, ask us, we can help you. So yeah, I guess just a plea to keep doing the reporting. We'll, we can help you solve the, the collaboration issues. Yes. Um, keep cool, have fun, be ambitious. <laughs> Great. Good, good tech <laughs> stuff will, you know, eventually come your way, and and uh, but uh, yeah, that's it. That was a good final note, I think. <laughs> well, thank you, panel. I just uh, have a few. Uh, I promised Marina Walker to tell you all that. Uh, the Pulitzer Center also has some uh, grants for AI projects, if you're interested. It could be both uh, for uh, exploring it as a tool or as you have done, Garance, to, to uh, cover it out in society. 
And uh, now I want to thank everybody for uh, being here today at Lindholm and Science Park, and I hope that you will enjoy the rest of the conference at the Svenska Messan and uh, your days in Gothenburg. Thank you so much. <laughs>